Hello friends, welcome to the world of project management and for your overview session on project risk process that is perform quantitative risk analysis. Motto of this training is to share my experience in preparing for PMP certification and have prepared few slides. Let's quickly move to our agenda for this session that we are going to discuss on what is perform quantitative risk analysis and its ITTOs. That is, we will discuss in more detail about its ITTOs, that is, inputs, tools and techniques, and outputs. It is the fourth process in the project risk management, and it is defined as perform quantitative risk analysis is the process of numerically analyzing the combined effect of identified individual project risk and other sources of uncertainty on overall project objectives. This definition is per the PMBO guide. Hope you understand its definition. The key benefit of this process is that it quantifies overall project risk exposure and it can also provide some additional quantitative risk information to support the risk response planning. Hope you understood about this key benefit also. Let me highlight some key points of this process. First is Accurately quantify probability and impact of risk. Second is calculate total project risk exposure. Third is calculate probability to meet overall project objectives. And fourth is determining the schedule and budget reserves. And the last is only perform quantitative risk analysis for high priority risk. Hope you understand these five key points and the definition and the benefit of this process. Let's move to our ITTOs, that is inputs, tools and techniques and outputs. In inputs, we have project management plan, which consisting of the risk management plan, scope baseline, schedule baseline and cost baseline. And coming to project documents, which contains the assumption log, basis of estimates, cost estimates, cost forecast, duration estimates, milestones list, resource requirements, risk register, risk report, and schedule forecast. And also we have EEFs and OPS, that is enterprise environmental factors and organizational process assets. And coming to tools and techniques, we have the expert judgment, the data gathering technique, which consisting of the interviews, and we have interpersonal and team skills, which consisting of the facilitation, and we have representation of uncertainty, and also we have data analysis, uh, which consisting of the simulation, sensitivity analysis, decision tree analysis, and influence diagrams. And in outputs, we have the project documents, which consisting of the risk report. Only we have one output here. Okay, fine. Let's discuss its input first in more detail. In inputs, starting with first project management plan, which consisting of the risk management plan, scope baseline, schedule baseline, and the cost baseline. Let me explain one by one. First with risk management plan. The risk management plan here specifies whether the quantitative risk analysis is required for the project or not. And coming to the scope baseline, schedule baseline, and the cost baseline, this three describes a starting point from which the effect of individual project risk and other sources of uncertainty are evaluated. Hope you understood about this project management plan input. Let's move to the next input, project documents, which consisting of assumption log, basis of estimates, cost estimates, cost forecast, duration estimates, milestones list, resource requirements, risk register, risk report, and schedule forecast. Let me explain one by one, first with assumption log. In this, the assumptions may form the inputs to the quantitative risk analysis if they are assessed as posing a risk to project objectives. And coming to basis of estimates. In this, the basis of estimates used in the planning of the project may be reflected in variability modeled during a quantitative risk analysis process. Moving to cost estimates. And this, the cost estimates provide the starting point from which the cost variability is evaluated. Moving to cost forecast. In this, the forecast such as the project estimate to complete, that is ETC, estimated completion EAC, budgeted completion BAC, and 
to complete performance index that is TCPI may be compared to the results of a quantitative cost risk analysis to determine the confidence level associated with this achieving these targets. Hope you understood this uh, cost forecast. Moving to duration estimates. The duration estimates provides the starting point from which the schedule variability is evaluated. Coming to milestones list. The significant events in the project define the schedule targets against which the results of a quantitative schedule risk analysis are compared. That is in order to determine the confidence level associated with achieving these targets. Hope you understood this milestones list. Moving to the resource requirements. The resource requirements provide the starting point from which the variability is evaluated. Coming to the risk register. The risk register contains the details of individual project risk to be used as input for quantitative risk analysis. Coming to risk report. The risk report describes the sources of overall project risk and the current overall project risk status. Moving to the schedule forecast. In this, the forecast may be compared to the results of a quantitative schedule risk analysis to determine the confidence level associated with achieving these targets. Hope you understood about all these project document inputs. Let's move to the next input. We have enterprise environmental factors. In this, we have the industry studies of similar projects and the published material includes the commercial risk databases or checklist. Hope you understood about this EFs. Moving to the next input, we have organizational process assets that is OPS, which includes the information from the similar completed projects. Hope you understood about all the inputs of the perform quantitative risk analysis. Let's move to its tools and techniques. In tools and techniques, first we have the expert judgment. In this, the expertise should be considered from individuals or groups with some specialized knowledge or training in some areas related to this process. Let me explain the areas. First is translating the information on individual project risk and the other sources of uncertainty into the numeric inputs for the quantitative risk analysis model. Second is selecting the most appropriate representation of uncertainty to model particular risk or other sources of uncertainty. And third is modeling the techniques that are appropriate in the context of the project. And fourth is identifying which tools would be most suitable for the selected modeling techniques. And fifth is interpreting the outputs of quantitative risk analysis. So this five areas should be considered while we are selecting the experts for this process. Hope you understood about this technique. Let's move to the next technique. We have data gathering techniques, which includes the interviews. In this, the interviews may be used to generate the inputs for the quantitative risk analysis, drawing on input that includes the individual project risk and other sources of uncertainty. Hope you understood about this technique. Let's move to the next technique, interpersonal and team skills, which consisting of the facilitation. What is facilitation in this? Facilitation workshops can improve the effectiveness by establishing a clear understanding of the purpose of the workshop, building consensus among the participants, ensuring the continued focus on the task and using some creative approaches to deal with interpersonal conflict or sources of bias. Hope you understood about this facilitation. Let's move to the next technique, representation of uncertainty. In this, the quantitative risk analysis requires some inputs to a quantitative risk analysis model that reflects the individual project risk and other sources of uncertainty. And also, where the duration, cost or resource requirements for a planned activity is uncertain, the range of possible values can be represented in the model as a probability distribution. And this may take several forms. The most commonly Used forms are triangular, normal, log normal, beta, uniform, or discrete distributions. Hope you understood this representation of uncertainty. Let's move to the next technique, data analysis technique. In the data analysis technique, we have the simulations, sensitivity analysis, decision tree analysis, and influence diagrams. Let me explain one by one. First, with simulations. What are simulations? 
the quantitative risk analysis uses a model that stimulates the combined effect of individual project risk and other sources of uncertainty to evaluate their potential impact on achieving the project objectives. And the simulations are typically performed using a Monte Carlo analysis. That is, when running a Monte Carlo analysis for a cost risk, the simulation uses the project cost estimates. And when running a Monte Carlo analysis for a scheduled risk, the scheduled network diagram and the duration estimates are used. And also an integrated quantitative cost scheduled risk analysis. It is using both the inputs. That is, the output is a quantitative risk analysis model. Hope you understood these points. And also in this, the input values, example, the cost estimates, duration estimates, or occurrence of the probability branches are chosen at a random for each iteration. And the output represents the range of possible outcomes for the project. Example, the project in date, the project cost at completion, etc. The typical outputs here includes a histogram representing the number of iterations where a particular outcome resulted from the simulation. Or a cumulative probability distribution that is S curve representing the probability of achieving any particular outcome or less. The same the representation you can see in the slide as the S curve from the quantitative cost of risk analysis with predicted total project cost on x-axis and with a range of uncertainty and cumulative probability. Hope you understood about the simulation technique. Let's move to the next data analysis technique that is sensitivity analysis. What is sensitivity analysis? The sensitivity analysis helps to determine which individual project risk or other sources of uncertainty have the most potential impact on the project outcomes. And one typical display of sensitivity analysis is the tornado diagram that which represents the calculated correlation coefficient for each element of the quantitative risk analysis model that can influence the project outcome. You can refer to the slide that how the activity or duration displays in the tornado diagram. Hope you understood about this technique also. Let's move to the next data analysis technique that is decision tree analysis. What are decision tree analysis? The decision trees are used to support selection of the best of several alternative courses of action. And the alternative paths through the project are shown in the decision tree using some branches representing different decisions or events, each of which can have associated cost and related individual project risk that includes both the threats and opportunities. And the endpoints of these branches in the decision tree represents the outcome following the particular path, which can be a negative or positive. Okay, hope you understood about this technique also. Let's move to the last data analysis technique that is influence diagrams. The influence diagrams are graphical aids to decision making under uncertainty. And an influence diagram represents a project or situation within the project as a set of entities, outcomes and influences together with the relationships and effect between them. Okay, hope you understood about all these tools and techniques of the perform quantitative risk analysis. Let's move to its outputs. As I said, we have only one output that is project document updates which consisting of the risk report. This risk report output will be updated to reflect the results of the quantitative risk analysis that includes the assessment of overall project risk exposure, detailed probabilistic analysis of the project, prioritized list of individual project risk, trends in quantitative risk analysis results, and recommended risk responses. Hope you understood about all the outputs of perform quantitative risk analysis. So we have completed all the ITTOs that is inputs, tools and techniques and outputs of perform quantitative risk analysis. This completes our fourth session, fourth process on the project risk management knowledge area and hope this complete session is easy and understandable for you. Fine. Let's discuss more detail on the next process in the project risk management that is planned risk responses. In the next video, kindly provide your feedback on the given email ID and please subscribe my channel if you like this video.
Bye for now. It's your Anil Kumar Dharam.